Business on the BBC. Make the connection. Trevelyan in Washington. This is BBC World News America. As Western leaders promise to back Ukraine for as long as it takes, a Russian missile hits a shopping mall full of civilians. This crowded shopping center in central Ukraine was struck by the Russians. Officials say at least 13 people are dead and more than 50 injured. After the US Supreme Court overturned the national right to an abortion, now the conservative majority rules a school football coach has the right to pray in public on the field. We'll ask our reporter Anthony Zercher what this latest ruling tells us about the direction America's highest court is taking. We go undercover in a special report to expose a cruel trade in disabled children trafficked from Tanzania and forced to beg in towns across Kenya. And how a shortage of lifeguards here in the US could mean a summer at the seaside minus the swimming. Welcome to World News America on PBS and around the globe. We begin tonight in central Ukraine. A Ukrainian official say a Russian missile strike hit a crowded shopping center in the city of Kremenchuk, killing at least 13 people and wounding dozens more. It's believed around 1,000 civilians were at the mall at the time of the attack. In response, President Zelensky said it was useless to hope for decency and humanity from Moscow. BBC's Joe Inwood reports from Ukraine. Well, that attack and Russia's slow but steady advances in the war are only adding to the pressure on Western leaders, who are holding two summits this week, talking about how to support Ukraine and punish Moscow. The leaders of the world's most advanced economies, the Group of Seven, met in Germany today, and they heard from President Zelensky via video link. G7 leaders promise to help Ukraine for as long as it takes. The BBC's Sean Lay joins us now from southern Germany. And Sean, uh, the U.S. National Security Advisor is briefing that Mr. Zelensky told G7 leaders he wants to shorten the war and end it before the winter. What more can you tell us? <laughs> Sean Lay there in the middle of a Bavarian lightning storm. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, the United States Supreme Court ruling on abortion led to a weekend of celebration and protest across America. Now, the fight over abortion rights has moved to the states, where abortion clinics are closing in some places. While in California, lawmakers are trying to amend the state constitution to protect abortion rights. And this morning, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that a former high school football coach had the right to pray in public on the field. Joining us now for more on all the day's political news is the BBC's senior North America correspondent, Anthony Zercher. Anthony, there is a flurry of activity across America in the States over abortion rights. How can you sum up what's happening? Anthony Zercher, thank you so much for joining us there. Well, to Bangladesh now, where floods have killed dozens of people and left more than four million others stranded. The United Nations warns that around three and a half million children in the country urgently need safe drinking water, as there's a risk of disease when people are forced to drink flood water. Our South Asia correspondent, Regini Vardianathan, now reports. A BBC investigation has exposed a human trafficking network smuggling disabled children from Tanzania to Kenya. Many are taken from their parents with the promise of a better life. Instead, the children are forced to beg on the streets, often for years, while the captors take all of the profits. BBC Africa Eye helped one victim escape. Nairi Mwangi reports now from Nairobi, and a warning, her report contains distressing details from the very start. In other news now from around the world, 11 people have been killed and more than 250 injured after an explosion of toxic gas in Jordan at the port of Aqaba. A chemical storage container fell while being transported, causing a large plume of what's been confirmed as chlorine gas. Specialist teams have been sent to the port to deal with the cleanup operation. 
The family of the UK journalist who was murdered in the Amazon last month have attended his funeral in Rio de Janeiro. The sister of Dom Phillips said he'd been killed for trying to tell the world about the destruction of the rainforest. Three suspects have been arrested for his murder and that of Bruno Pereira, an expert in Brazil's indigenous people. Forensic investigators in South Africa are still trying to establish how at least 21 teenagers and young people died in a bar in the Eastern Cape province at the weekend. The victims had no visible injuries and police say it's possible that they suffered poisoning. There are reports that the youngest of the victims was only 13 years old. The Taliban in Afghanistan has asked for mutual respect from the international community as parts of the country look to rebuild from last week's devastating earthquake which killed more than a thousand people. Speaking to the BBC, a Taliban spokesman said the sanctions which ended assistance to Afghanistan were not what it needed. Even before the earthquake, more than a third of Afghans struggled to reach basic living standards. It's the summer, so time to head to the beach. In New York City, the outdoor pools open tomorrow. But in this economy, where there are more jobs than people who want them, there's a shortage of workers, especially seasonal ones like lifeguards. America's tight labor market could affect those lazy summer days at the beach, as Samira Hussein now reports from New York. A shortage of lifeguards, maybe, but at least we have Wimbledon this summer, where it's day one of the tennis tournament. Britain's number one, Emma Raducanu, had a winning start as the defending champion beat her Belgian opponent. All eyes are on Serena Williams to see if the 40-year-old can win another Grand Slam title, putting her into the record books. Elsewhere, the defending men's champion, Novak Djokovic, is through to the second round. The BBC's Chetan Partek is at the courts in SW19 in London. Can't wait for that. Chetan Partek reporting there from Wimbledon. And finally, as players take to the courts at Wimbledon, the world's greatest cyclists are gearing up for the Tour de France, which begins on Friday in Denmark. To commemorate hosting the first stage of the Tour, the capital Copenhagen has been adorned in yellow, the colour of the Tour leader's jersey. And a model of the Eiffel Tower has been built to honour the very end of the 21-day race in Paris, of course. I'm Laura Trevelyan. Thank you so much for watching BBC World News America. Hello. The eastern half of Europe is in the midst of quite an intense heat wave.